What is up world? This is Reckless Yuki bringing you guys another exciting lag test and today we'll be going over the wired Xbox controller versus the wireless Xbox controller. Now what really sparked my interest in this was I found this one guy who made a very interesting video as far as his lag test and he had a very fancy setup where he hooked up wires to a button and when he depressed the button the wires would contact connected to his uh, camera and that will start a uh, video recording of his screen and so he used that as his control for the starting point. But one thing I didn't really like about that test was the way that the wires were positioned or using the wires uh, in the first place because there's no real way to very minutely uh, like calibrate how far those wires are positioned away from each other. So the slightest difference from the two controllers will be a huge amount of difference as far as milliseconds go from when you push the button. So he had a very interesting result of like a large difference between a wired and wireless controller. And where I looked up on other videos and other kind of professional nerds, the way that they explained it, they said that the wired Xbox controller and wireless Xbox controller only have a 4 to 8 milliseconds delay. So really, no one's going to be able to see that because a HDMI cable is limited to 16.6 .6 milliseconds of delay per frame because that's 60 frames per second. And so some simple math, you just have to... Uh, take 1 divided by 60, multiply by a, a 1,000, and that's the uh, how you calculate the uh, how long a frame is at that rate. So one frame equals 16.67 milliseconds, then you multiply that by however many frames you took, and that will be the total amount of delay you have from when you pull the trigger to what's seen on the screen. And so from these conflicting videos, I decided to do my own test, which you'll be seeing now. And basically, I recorded myself pulling the trigger uh, with the Xbox controller, the wired and the wireless, uh, pointing that to my TV screen and uh, pulling the trigger like in front of it so you can kind of see at the same time of when I complete the uh, engagement of the button to how long it takes for the screen to uh, reflect what I just did. So that's what we'll be doing. That's how I did this test and I feel that it's very controlled. So if you guys feel that I should do this differently or think that there's a better way, feel free to let me know. But as far as I know, this is the best way to do it so let's get into it. On the screen you're looking at my wired Xbox 360 controller hooked up to my Xbox and the display is my BenQ GL2450HM uh, gaming monitor. And we will be counting the frames that it takes for me to pull the right trigger until the screen shows that the trigger is fully engaged. So right here is about the uh, biggest pull of my index finger so the most change in the uh, trigger position so we'll use we'll use this as a starting point and from starting here we'll be counting so one two three four four so I'll be four frames from when I pull the trigger on my wired Xbox controller for it to show on my gaming monitor and that four frames will uh, equal to six six point six seven milliseconds of delay here is my wireless Xbox 360 controller hooked up to my uh, Xbox being displayed through my BenQ uh, GL2450HM gaming monitor. And about right here is the most amount of change for my uh, trigger pull, so we'll be using this as a starting point. And so we'll count the frames. One, two, three, four. So that is four frames and that is 66.67 milliseconds of delay. Well, there we go, guys. So as far as today's restrictions on console gaming, as far as the HDMI only being able to process at a maximum of 60 hertz, so that's 60 frames per second, there is no difference between using a wired and wireless Xbox controller. So feel free to use whatever you want. You're not going to be at any sort of disadvantage. Just keep in mind if you are planning on going to some sort of a large tournament, it's usually you have to use a wired controller, so just keep that in mind in case that's an avenue you want to go to. But if you're just sitting at home playing games, there is no real difference. You choose or just use the controller that you feel most comfortable with. And uh, thank you guys for watching and have a pleasant day.